There are now two big iPhones to choose from. We've got the iPhone 14 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. But which one is right for you? Now, if you're confused about the differences between the iPhone 14 Plus, which is a new entrant this year, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I completely understand. But the good news is that there are some very clear differences between the iPhone 14 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, if you know where to look. Firstly, a quick word from today's sponsor, NordVPN. I use NordVPN every single day. Basically, if I'm in a coffee shop, I have my laptop here, I have the internet over here, and I have the coffee shop's Wi-Fi, which isn't a bad thing at all, but I have no control over that Wi-Fi. Horrible people can get into that middle bit and nick my stuff. I don't want that. The good news is that NordVPN sits in that middle bit and stops those horrible people from nicking my stuff. And it also lets me access home content like the BBC iPlayer if I happen to be traveling abroad. It's one of the fastest VPNs on the market. It costs about the same as a cup of coffee every month. It's a complete no-brainer. It goes straight onto every single device I have. Just head to nordvpn.com forward slash Mark Ellis VPN and find out about their 30 day completely risk free money back guarantee. So the iPhone 14 Plus costs £949 in the UK and if you want to go for the iPhone 14 Pro Max you've got to find another £250. At face value, the two biggest differences between these two phones is one, the camera system, which I'll get onto later, and secondly, the materials used. So with the iPhone 14 Plus, it's made out of aluminium, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max is made from stainless steel. But materials and camera to one side, they are strikingly similar. They have the exact same sized True Tone OLED screen that's protected by a ceramic shield and a display which is HDR10 ready and compatible with Dolby Vision. They've both got Face ID, 5G readiness, IP68 dust and water resistance, and MagSafe. Even their dimensions are nearly identical. The Pro Max is slightly bigger and marginally heavier, but it's not by any amount that any normal human being would notice. Neither phone has swapped or dropped lightning either. That port is still there. There's no USB-C, unfortunately. And they both run the exact same version of iOS. So where do things get different? We'll start with the display, and that 6.7 inch display that appears on both the iPhone 14 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro Max is lovingly called the Super Retina XDR display. It's got a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio and P3 color. It's a lovely thing. However, if you dig in a little bit further, there are some interesting differences between these two devices. Firstly, the iPhone 14 Pro Max has ProMotion, which means it can scale right down to one hertz refresh rate and right up to a buttery smooth 120 hertz refresh rate. The difference with that is significant when you compare it directly with the iPhone 14 Plus's 60 hertz display. But in reality, unless you're A-B testing the these phones like people like me do, or if you're coming from a high refresh rate screen on a different device, you won't notice that 60 hertz panel on the iPhone 14 Plus as being an issue, because it isn't. But the iPhone 14 Pro Max does go further. Apple has added an always on display for the first time to one of its smartphones, which means the time, your wallpaper and widgets always remain visible. Something you might notice between the Plus and the Pro Max is the brightness. The cheaper of the two massive iPhones has a typical brightness of 800 nits. That's not bad at all, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max raises the bar even further to 1000 nits, and where the Plus can hit 1200 nits of peak brightness during HDR content, the Pro Max smashes it with 1600 nits, and then it gets even brighter outdoors with a massive 2000 nits. So both the iPhone 14 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro Max have lovely displays. You won't be disappointed with either of them, but the Pro Max, I think, does successfully give you more bang for buck. ProMotion alone is a big upgrade and let's be honest, brings the iPhone in line with most other smartphones. And that additional brightness is a nice bonus, as is the always on display. So if the display is really important to you, those upgrades alone might just tempt you to the Pro Max rather than the Plus. Onto the cameras and the 12 megapixel camera system on the iPhone 14 Plus comes with a 26 millimeter main camera and an ultra wide. On the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you'll get a 24 millimeter main camera, an ultra wide, 
and a telephoto. Now those two extra millimeters of focal length are relatively insignificant, but it's a different story when it comes to the sensor. The iPhone 14 Pro Max adds 36 more megapixels, which takes it up to a whopping 48 megapixel sensor. I won't get into the weeds with this stuff and talk about pixel binning, surface area and imaging pipelines because you probably don't care. The important thing to bear in mind is that that larger sensor on the iPhone 14 Pro Max enables the camera system to capture far more light and produce much more detailed images. That means better low light performance and the ability to crop your photos without losing too much detail like you would on the iPhone 14 Plus. There's more zoom options on the Pro Max as well, and it also offers macro photography, night mode portraits, and the ability to shoot Apple Pro Raw if you want to enter the digital darkroom after shooting. When it comes to video, both phones are quite similar, actually. They can both shoot in 4K HDR with Dolby Vision at a maximum of 60 frames per second. They're also now both capable, finally, of recording cinematic mode at 4K. The iPhone 14 Pro Max adds ProRes video recording and macro shooting, but that's about it. The new 24mm focal length is quite nice. For someone like me, I shoot in 24mm for this to camera stuff. I like that. For most people, it won't make a huge difference. And really, for regular iPhone users, I think the video capabilities across these two phones are pleasingly consistent. Right, onto the chips powering these phones, and I will keep this very simple. The iPhone 14 Plus runs from an A15 Bionic chip, whereas the iPhone 14 Pro Max has been granted the brand new A16 Bionic. The latter will probably perform better-ish on benchmarks, but in everyday use, you will not notice any difference between these two phones. Both phones will be super fast because they're iPhones and the chips they have inside them are built specifically for every single task that phone needs to do. These two iPhones aren't cheap at all, but they get an awful lot more expensive the more storage you add. Both start at 128 gigabytes, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max goes right up to one terabyte of storage if that's the kind of thing that you need. But in my opinion, the only time you'd ever need that much storage is if you're keeping a ton of media on the device or you're investing lots of time shooting videos in that Pro RAW format, which I don't think many people are. When it comes to battery, it remains to be seen how these devices perform in real life, but with my experience of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we're in for some pretty good things. The 13 Pro Max is capable of two days, probably longer away from a charger, so the 14 Pro Max should be the same. And the 14 Plus does look a little bit less in terms of the official figures that Apple gives it on its website, but given the size of it, the size of the battery in there, and just the amount of battery saving techniques built into iOS, I think that phone will be a serious performer as well. So when it comes to battery life, I really don't think there'll be much in it. Beyond the camera, the materials, and the marginal differences I've revealed in today's video, there's one headline-grabbing point of comparison between the iPhone 14 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The latter comes complete with the brand new and ridiculously named Dynamic Island. This feature results from Apple detaching the notch from the top of the display, moving it down, and adding a dynamic area to the side and below. The result is this kind of floating camera housing that expands, contracts, and fills itself with all sorts of cool stuff. The music you're playing, face ID confirmations, turn-by-turn -turn navigation instructions, and incoming calls all appear in that dynamic island. I'm yet to get my hands on it yet until I get my iPhone 14 Pro Max later this week, but the dynamic island is a brilliant, I think, two-fingered salute to those who have spent the last few years notch bashing. Clearly, Apple doesn't feel that display technology has reached a point where they can get rid of that notch entirely, and for whatever reason, they don't want to go down the Samsung route of having a hole punch cutout. So they've taken what they trust, what they know works, which is the notch, and they've done something with it that no one saw coming. The Dynamic Island isn't a reason to spend another £250 on your next iPhone, but it is worth bearing in mind that the iPhone 14 Plus doesn't have it. That still has the notch. And for some people, Dynamic Island, combined with those other upgrades on the iPhone 14 Pro Max over the iPhone 14 Plus, might just be enough to tip the scales.
As I always say, I can't tell you which iPhone is right for you. The one you go for out of the iPhone 14 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro Max will depend entirely on your budget and the desire to stretch that budget to obtain certain features. At face value, the iPhone 14 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro Max are alarmingly similar. But when you dig in, I think it becomes clear that this year's Pro devices are separated by some very compelling advanced and debut features. So which one are you going to go for out of the Plus and the Pro Max? Get involved in the comments. And if you want to hear my full thoughts on last week's event, keep watching for a link to the full reaction video.